In stories of yore, heed me, for thy most precious gift lies in thine attention. It hath the power to be wielded, bent, or led astray. Nay, it may even be turned against thee. The catalyst for this enchantment oft lies in magic. Though ye may doubt, thy disbelief doth diminish its potency. Take heed of what lies ahead, for thy gaze shall be molded by it. It was I, Dio! Wait, wait, this has a point, I promise. This is just an example of the art of misdirection. Many stories use this narrative technique to craft engaging stories that keep an audience on their feet. Misdirection is typically associated with mystery and horror, but can be used in any story. In the context of writing, misdirection is a narrative technique that subtly guides an audience's perceptions, expectations, or attention in a different direction. A classic example of this is the Rickroll. In this case, a person being Rickrolled expects the hyperlink to lead to relevant info, but instead, they're misdirected to a completely different outcome. This is also used with magic. In Now You See Me, we see this writing technique throughout the story. They mislead their audience with elaborate schemes, and they're tricked by the movie's end. Free Ren also uses this technique to craft an engaging story. One scene in particular stands out when thinking about misdirection. In Episode 7, Graf Granat leads Lord Luger and demons into his son's room. Graf remembers his son fondly. Lord Luger asks Graf what happened to his son. Graf points his sword towards Luger and explains that demons killed him. Graf turns the table on the demons and explains that he invited them to get revenge. This peace and void means nothing to Graf. Luger's eyes stray, and he points out that the room is spotless. He explains that he's done the same for his father since Graf killed him. Luger explains that they can end this and find another way to settle their differences. Graf drops his sword and concedes to the demons. As the demons leave the room, Linny asks, what is a father? Luger answers, saying, who can say? This scene takes two significant turns. At first, we thought Graf brought the demons for the peace and void, but then we learned that this was a ploy to catch the demons off guard. The next, we thought the demons could be sincere, but they only fooled us. This misdirection only comes from Freerun set up earlier in the episode. When Freerun prepares to attack the demon and is arrested, we think Freerun's ideas of demons must be dated due to her age, since even the townsfolk see Luger as a person, even though they're scared. However, Freerun sees them as wild beasts. The payoff to whether demons can change is answered when it's revealed that Luger lied to Graf. The flashback about the young demon even answers all our questions about the nature of demons. Can demons live with humans? Yes, they can. Will demons kill humans? Yes, they will. Demons can live with humans, but will always see humans as prey. Demons are not evil. They're just incompatible with humans. They see the world differently. In the same way that the demon tried to stop the villagers from making it feel like an outcast, it decided to kill the man it was living with to be on equal footing. The words that the demon used to gain sympathy were just a ploy, or, in other words, a misdirection. Now, just using a misdirection does not mean that your writing suddenly becomes well-written. You have to know why, how, and when to use it. In The Art of Misdirection by Michael Kurland, he explains that misdirection can be internal or external. An author can frame the story to misdirect the audience, or a character in the story may misdirect one or more of the other characters, or both. In Freerun, we can see internal misdirection in the Graf and Luger scene. For external misdirection, we can see it in episode 12. We see Freerun and the gang going on about their journey. It's explained that Himmel has a replica of a legendary sword. He says that one day he'll wield the real sword and defeat the Demon King, thus becoming a real hero. We assume Himmel obtained the real sword, since Himmel and the gang defeated the Demon King and became a real hero. Stark even parrots the story as if that were the case. However, we learn that the sword was never freed. Now, the reason for this is that doing it allows for a more engaging experience as our expectations are being played with. But playing with expectations doesn't deserve all the praise. It would be better if it played into the story as well. Freerun does this as a story and shows what it means to be a hero. It's not about doing grand things like defeating the dragons, but it plays a role. What it's really about is the impact you have on other people. We can see this with Wurble's character. Ear describes Wurble as ruthless, but when Wurble has the opportunity to kill Yubel, he hesitates. We learn that Wurble's not as cold-blooded as we first thought. Misdirection. Wurble still clings to his virtues. In episode 28, we get more info about Wurble. As a young boy, he heard of Himmel's tales. Despite defeating demons and dragons, Wurble's people were most impressed by Himmel's stories of helping people directly. 
like helping an old lady or fighting off a beast to protect a village. Because of these small efforts, people will have tales to tell for the rest of their lives. With Werble, we see how Himmel's minor gestures changed other people. On a side note, this video is about more than just misdirection. It's about how Freerun crafts its story. Misdirection is just one of the many narrative techniques Freerun uses. But there's other techniques. For example, foils. Foils are any aspect of a story that contrasts another element. We can see this with Freerun vs. Demons, Freerun vs. Sign, and Freerun vs. Seti. The contrast between Freerun and Demons is how they approach relationships. Demons lack empathy, whereas Freerun is working to understand. Demons' lack of empathy stops them from being truly destructive. If demons could understand as well as humans, they could counter mana suppression better. Freerun uses the idea of characters detecting one suppressing their mana as the potential for a character having a connection, or knowing another character. We see this in episode 10, when Freerun meets Flame for the first time, and we can tell that she's suppressing her mana. Later we see this when Himmel can tell Freerun is a powerful mage. The counterexample is Luger not seeing Fern as a threat, to the point that he turns his back. We also see this when Aura challenges Freerun to a power scaling debate. And we see this in Seti's relationship with Lernen. In episode 27, Lernen can tell that Freerun is suppressing her mana. But this came from coincidence. The person that Lernen should be able to detect is Seti. But he can't do that. This shows what kind of character Lernen is. He's the opposite of Freerun in that she's a mage of a powerful world. And Lernen is a mage of war. What Lernen wants most is to be acknowledged by his master. Instead of talking to his master about his feelings, he thinks his best option is to kill Freerun. She does not regret teaching them despite them not meeting her expectations, but she does not praise them. This plotline is quite impressive, since it combines other ideas in Freerun. The idea of being praised, the idea of making memories for someone to remember you, and the idea of telling someone how you feel. The characters pursuing the positive action learn to live a better life and resolve their conflicts in their relationships. In contrast, characters that don't even express how they genuinely feel destructively go about things. Freerun does other exciting things with its writing. It shows characters who are seemingly evil but still have humanity in that they seek understanding. We see this most with Yubel. While being sadistic, she craves the need to understand other people like Rond, who constantly hides how he feels in himself, which makes Yubel so attracted to him. Misdirection. In Freerun, you could be the most sadistic human, but you'll still crave understanding, which is a direct contrast to demons, who are incapable of doing so. The choice of what type of magic you use says a lot about a mage. Freerun prioritizes the fundamentals in gathering random spells. According to Freerun, the fundamentals are all you need to beat the current era of mages. This claim is valid, as we can see from Fern's ability to fight other mages. However, the focal point of this idea is not the constant pursuit of powerful spells, but spells that matter. Powerful spells are not that special in this world. Although they pose the potential to deal with legions of enemies, they can't change people in the same way that random spells do. Freerun's favorite spell comes from her master, who allows her to make a field of flowers. This spell leaves a mark on Freerun, Himmel, and Seti. Earlier, we mentioned that Freerun had several themes. Many shows have a central theme, since they use a serialized format, where the plot spans the entire series. An episodic format tends to have standalone episodes. Freerun uses both models in its story. Episodes have different themes, but they ultimately branch into the larger story. We can see this with the Stark and Fern-centric episodes. These episodes teach us on the idea of telling someone how you feel. Many times, Stark and Fern's conflict is caused by miscommunication. One of them usually has a problem, and then they make up when they express their feelings to the other person. This is shown in episode 17, where Fern gets mad at Stark. This is also seen in episode 28, when Denkin tells Fern how Freerun brought back the joy of magic to Denkin. In Denkin's past, he used magic as a tool for power, but once he came across Freerun, it reminded him the joy of magic. Fern tells Denkin that he should tell Freerun how he feels since Freerun would appreciate it. Fern can understand that Freerun is a little awkward, but would appreciate being praised. Episode 11 shows how two nearly immortal beings see the world. Kraft is a legendary hero, but most have forgotten him. Life would be marked by loneliness and meaningless if no one would tell him his actions mattered. And that's why Kraft has such a solid devotion to his faith. He asks Freerun if she does not believe in the goddess, then he will remember and praise her. Freerun hesitates and remembers a conversation she had with Hyder. Their discussion is similar to Freerun's current conversation, but Hyder now acknowledges Freerun's ability to suppress her mana. Hyder praises Freerun for her strength and dedication. Freerun does not think much about her ability, but Hyder tells Freerun that it's important. Freerun does not tell Kraft about her stories since she has met someone who has praised her enough for a lifetime.
Since Freeman had someone to praise her, she does the same for others, since she knows how important it is. This can be seen most with Sin. Sin is like Freeman of the past. He's stuck living a life he regrets, but does nothing to change it. He wanted to go on an adventure with his best friend, but after declining and not seeing his friend return after 10 years, he seemingly gave up. In episode 13, we see that Freeman was the same way, before she went on her adventure with Himmel. She believed her time to fight had passed, but Himmel reminded her that there was no point in dwelling on the past when you had the present. Sin constantly lies to himself to avoid reality. He takes his brother's situation and tries to use it to explain why he can't leave. The truth is that none of these things were really ever obstacles in stopping Sin. What stopped him was himself. When he finally sees the truth, he can journey to find his friend. While on his side quest with Freerun, he's praised by Freerun with pats on the head whenever he does something that Freerun approves of similar to what Hyder did for Freerun. What matters most in any journey is not the destination, but the memories you make along the way. In episode 16, we have a bittersweet exploration of this idea. As the episode begins, the crew detours to meet one of Freerun's old friends. At first, we think Vol is just a senile old man, but we soon see that he's pretending not to remember Freerun and trips Stark to show that he still has it. As the episode continues, we learn that one of the villagers sees Vol as a crazy old man that's been protecting the village for ages. Since we already saw that he could remember Freerun and Trip Stark, we take the villagers' words with a grain of salt. But what is Vol's reason for protecting the village? Vol protects the village since it's the village that his late wife loves. By safeguarding the village, Vol is remembering his wife. Vol only holds this memory to himself, but still tells others about it. When Vol acknowledges Himmel, he says that he'll carry Himmel's memories. Himmel then asks Freerun to hold on to their memories into the future, since Freerun will live a long life. When Vol questions Freerun on her memories, we see she's fired up to defend herself. But we learn that Vol is the one starting to forget. He's lost the memories of his wife, but he still protects the village since it matters to him. Freerun takes this as a joke, since she thinks that Vol's not senile. Only for Vol to not realize that the Demon King has been defeated. Freerun's eyes jolt in surprise. She sees that Vol is losing his memories. Misdirection. Freerun only smiles at this. She's not hiding a cold, sadistic side, but she knows that Vol is just another person's memory that she'll carry with her to the future like everyone else. This episode accepts the inevitable reality that our actions may lose their meaning. But as long as those actions still matter to us, that's what matters most. To end this video, the most significant idea in Freerun is time. We all have it, but we can't control it. So we try our best to make the most out of it. Freerun, who has almost all the time in the world, was lost in what mattered most in life. In episode 1, she didn't think much about spending 10 years with Himmel, Hyder, and Eisen. She didn't believe that taking on an apprentice would be worth it, since humans would die in the end. Eisen, who also has a long lifespan, could see the problem with this idea, but he could not change Freerun. By episode 5, Eisen can see how Freerun has changed with less than 1 100th of her life. She now has an apprentice that she works to understand. And later, she makes friends with other people. She learns to cherish other people's joys, and that is not a misdirection. Congratulations on uncovering the truth. But remember, this is just the beginning of your journey. Stay focused on your goals. Ignore the hand and his tricks. The path ahead may be challenging, but with determination and resilience, you can overcome any challenge that comes your way. And always remember, while magic may be powerful, the real magic lies in the connections we build and the moments we cherish with others.